when I first bought my home, I had grandiose visions of using this Fiskars push reel mower, or EEL, and getting a workout, becoming physically fit, being able to use it without paying any money for electricity. All these wonderful ideas. You know, there's no maintenance, there's no oil change, there's no gas. I don't have to store gasoline. I thought, wow, this is the way to do it. My ex-brother-in-law bought one of these and had one. What I didn't remember was that my ex-brother-in-law took my 20-gallon gas can when I was leaving and he used it for his lawnmower, which means he eventually upgraded to a gas lawnmower. The real mower didn't work out for him either, and he had a very small lot. I'm talking extremely small. His house was like 820 square feet, and the lot was, oh God, probably less than an eighth of an acre. It was tiny, very tiny, still is. My experience with this mower has been not good, unfortunately. I really wanted to like it. You know, I'm, I'm very green, as you can see. I buy green things. I want an electric vehicle eventually. When the price is right and it actually the math works out, which is hopefully going to happen in the next five years. The problem I had with this thing was it wasn't that easy to set up. You know, there was some adjustments on there. And it's, man, it's you got to be really careful with those blades. Uh, you don't want to go near them. You will lose something. <laughs> uh, several issues are with this thing is that, one, if the grass gets out of control, you are not going to be able to get it back in control with this thing. You have to run with this thing in order to get up enough momentum to cut through the grass, unless you're a really big guy, you know. The other problem is that it just cuts the grass once. Bagging it, you can forget it. All three of these suck at bagging. They they will not bag. That these will fill up halfway. I didn't even attempt on that one. It would have filled up so quickly. It's a joke. You know, you need a riding lawnmower with a chute into it, like a a trailer if you want to bag. When I first moved in, my neighbors thought I was crazy. Uh, I think I've removed all doubt at this point after yesterday when you watch my next video that I'll post about uh, pulling weeds is for pussies. This guy here, you have to run behind it like I was saying. And my neighbors were watching me do this when I first bought the house. And uh, they don't like me because I paid a very good price for this house. And that makes them not be able to sell their home because of it. Not my fault. They would have taken the same opportunity as I did. I'm trying to remember the other reasons why I don't like this thing. But the, the mulching, you can't mulch with it. So once you cut it, that's it. It's laying on top of the grass. So, you know, I, I tried mowing the grass. And what I ended up doing was like... Uh, I would do a section of the yard, you know, I would do the front uh, side, I'd do the back, I'd do the other side, and then I'd do the other part of the front. And it was like, as soon as I got done with all four, I already had to do another one. And that just, that, that was no bueno. I couldn't, couldn't keep up with that. So then I went to this guy here. This guy is awesome. He is a 120 volt. 13 amp, 21 inch. He's corded. You have to run a cord with him. And that was the biggest problem. I got sick and tired of slinging that cord. Last day I used him, for the first time ever, I ran over the cord twice. And uh, put a bunch of slits in one. And took a, a little bit of the insulation off of the other with a little bit of the copper. And the cords, I don't have them in here right now. The cords are not cheap. Uh, they're not expensive because I got them on Amazon, but they're heavy duty. And uh, 10 gauge, one's a 100 foot and one's a 50 foot. So 150 foot length 
total with 10 gauge and I think the most you can run on that's like 15 amps this is 13 amps so I was fine and I had to connect it to different outlets as I was going around the house but I could get it and uh, I never really did get down a, a good system I constantly had to keep grabbing the cord and flipping it well that same day you know I think I was out there too long and the sun was getting to me and I was probably getting dehydrated and possibly a mild stroke uh, I had this thing down as low as it would go, and which is like two inches, and I was in the back by the AC unit, and I hit a chunk of concrete, and it stopped immediately. And uh, if you look at the blade underneath this thing, yeah, you can see it's bent to hell right there. That's where it hit it, and it just stopped it. And I don't know what's wrong with it. I would suspect the motor is trash. I have another blade for it, but this thing won't even start. I don't know if there's a, a restart switch on it. I didn't want to fool with it. Another motor, I think, was the cheapest I could find was 40 bucks. They sell. They started to sell this thing for like $167. That's incredibly cheap. Every, just about every, these two guys here, I've seen them go for like $50 less than what I paid for them, which is quite upsetting. So then I ended up buying this guy. This is a 40 volt. He came with a four amp hour and a two amp hour battery. It has two blades. I think they're like 10 inches a piece or something like that for 20 inches of coverage and they're staggered. Uh, like most lawnmowers with double blades with them being staggered, you can uh, get overlap and not have like a little piece of uh, lawn in the middle missing and uh, also you don't have to worry about timing them they're not on a uh, on a chain or sprocket system or something like that so they can run independently of one another this guy does not cut high enough I really want like a four inch cut and this guy goes up to like three inches and I don't know three eighths or something I really don't remember what it is you could put on bigger tires uh, which would be nice but the other thing with this guy is that if you're cutting tall grass, you let it get away from you, he will heat up and he will not work as well. And you will use up more battery and you won't get to be able to cut the long for as long of a duration as you would have had the grass been shorter. And then once this guy starts to heat up, he does not want to work. So you end up having to let him cool off. They make five amp hour batteries for it. Tempting. I have enough batteries at this point. Uh, and my next lawn mower, as soon as it becomes available, is I'm going to get an RM480EX, which is the Ryobi Riding Electric Lawn Mower, 38 inch, uh, 48 volt, and it cuts above four inches maximum and up to two and a half acres or two and a half hours worth of cutting too with the the x model which is the extended model versus the two acre uh two amp or excuse me two hour two acre version which is 75 amp hour batteries and the 2.5 is 100 amp hour batteries i know all this because my grandfather was asking me a bunch of questions and i had to research it because i was i was unaware of the answers i like this guy he's good uh, he's not as good as him. Man, th this guy, you could not bog him down. He will just tear through everything. This guy will get bogged down, and he'll die. And uh, what will happen is this side is the dedicated side. You have to have both batteries in at the same time. You can't run it with just one battery. Even if the battery's dead, he's got to be in there. He starts out on this side, which is the left side, if you're from behind it. Or if you're facing it, right side. I don't know. It depends on how you're looking at it. But then once this one dies, it'll kick over to this. I've learned that as soon as that happens, just swap them, you know, because otherwise, whenever it dies and gets killed, you have to flip it back over. And this is on Ultra HD, like an idiot, I did that. So this is going to time out in 10 minutes, which is in 15 seconds. Uh, so now I'm going to have to do a part two. Uh, and... Here's going to be the weed whacking stuff and the blower and then there's a Harbor Freight one for part two.